Whether you believe it or not, becoming a pen tester is hard. Like, really, really hard. I mean, at least in that way in which you're learning right now. It's not about the skills being hard by themselves, but the fact is that there is just too much to learn. And when I started, like most of you, I had absolutely no clue of what to learn first and in what order to learn the things. But in this podcast, I'll share with you my secret fast learning framework for pen testing that will make it incredibly easy for you to learn a lot of things in a very short period of time. And that's because learning a thing by itself doesn't take that much time. But after learning this one thing, the time we spend in confusion thinking about what to learn next is what really wastes a lot of our time. After this one single podcast, you will know how to escape the problem forever. So the big question is this. How are youngsters like us just want to get started in pen testing, have no connections in the industry and no real experience whatsoever? How do we start from the very scratch and become highly paid pen testers in the shortest possible amount of time without ever learning anything useless and to be able to start making real money from day one? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Avnash Yadav and welcome to the Untaught Pen Testing Secrets podcast. Hey guys, I welcome you all to the second episode of our pen testing podcast series on our channel. I was calling this thing as Comprovy Pen Testing Podcast till now, but I still haven't been able to decide an actual name yet. If you have any suggestions on what should we name this whole podcast series, please put that in the comments because I'm interested to know what can be some names for this series because I just don't want to keep calling it as Compre Pen Testing Podcast. I want some interesting names and which I'll, you know, if, if you have some ideas, you can just put them and uh, if I like them, I might just, you know, keep that as the name of this podcast series. So today we are going to talk about something that has taken me years to realize uh, in the last lecture, in the last podcast also, I just talked about something that took me years to learn. And this is another thing. And today's podcast, the topic itself is how to learn things fast in pen testing and what to learn and, it, you know, in what order to learn. Because this is something I struggled with for a long time. You see, even in my Udemy profile, I have mentioned a line in my author bio, which is something like, I was always confused in the beginning about what to learn, what not to learn, uh, and how to learn, and where to learn from, and those kind of things. And which are quite true things. Because for me, it has been a roller coaster journey. It has always been really difficult for me to learn stuff, because I've never been the kind of person who just easily understands everything and memorize everything. It always took me long time to learn or memorize anything I wanted to. And in pen testing, especially because it is kind of a new field and there's still not a lot of content in the field about this thing, I specifically faced a lot of problems while learning pen testing. And one of the biggest problems I already discussed in the last podcast, if you haven't seen that, you can see that, that's like the rat race. But today we are going to talk about how to learn. You see, where to learn is a very simple thing. Go and learn from YouTube, blog posts, you know, maybe some courses or do whatever you want. Where to learn is not the big problem. The problem is how to learn. Because in a field like pen testing, there is a hell lot of stuff. There are so many topics to learn and anyone can get easily confused like I was when I was like, 12 years old when I was initially trying to start this stuff. Um, not really that seriously, but you know, I was trying to go ahead and maybe I was thinking if I should learn hacking or not or those kind of things. Or actually, even before I turned 12, maybe 11 and a half years old or something like that. So since then, I have been on a journey to try and learn hacking. But then later on, I got serious about it. But what I realized at the end was that. I had wasted a lot of time in learning things that didn't matter. But now let's get back again to the, our point of this podcast that I was trying, I was really confused how to learn this stuff. You know, even after I had figured out what I have to learn from some experts, which I, you know, 
somehow I was able to connect to them in the industry. Some of them don't teach anymore. Some of them have left the industry. Some of them don't do pen testing anymore. They're still in Infosec. And most of them I just have lost connection with in the past few years. But I've definitely learned a lot from them. So that's how I learned. But for most people, I don't know a way that you can really learn in the in, in that way. Because I mostly I asked questions, a hell lot of questions, that much that it could easily frustrate anyone because I was asking so many questions. But for you, I guess you have figured out what you have to learn. Or even if you haven't, just stay connected to this podcast and I'll tell you a lot about that later on. But now let's come to how to learn exactly. And by how to learn, what I really mean is in what order to learn. You see, one day you're learning this thing and one day you're learning other thing and some other day you're not learning anything at all and sometimes you feel demotivated and, you know, you just have the content, you know what you have to learn, there's a lot of stuff to learn, but you don't know in which order to learn uh, and when to learn what. So that's what we are trying to fix in this podcast. After wasting a lot of years trying to learn things in a slow way, I developed a formula for me that I developed a formula that worked very well for me and might work very well for you as well to learn the right things in the right order in the shortest amount of time. That's, I think, the perfect or the at least the ideal way of learning something. If you can learn the right thing in the right order in the least amount of time, that's the ideal learning for me. So let's directly get to the point now. What I recommend is that you learn first of all overall basics. You can take any course or you, you know, when I say course, it doesn't mean you have to take a paid course by somebody. You know, there are lots of YouTube videos or other, you know, places where you can just find free long format video lectures of 15, 10 hours and you can just start watching them to learn the absolute basics. Because if you don't do that, you will not really be able to connect this stuff. So if you're an absolute beginner, go ahead and watch these kind of long format videos, at least one, or or you can take a free course or something like that uh, on, you know, YouTube or anywhere, basically, and, and learn the overall basics of ethical hacking. Because if you don't do that, you will not be able to understand the different parts of hacking before you can start learning about each of them in deep. So first of all, learn overall basics. But after this, once you're ready to learn specific things, I have three different approaches for you, which I have discovered worked very well for me to learn things really, really fast in pen testing, whether it's a tool or vulnerability or something. In fact, if everything which I have right now, except my knowledge vanishes and somehow gets destroyed and I have only 30 days to get back the position which I have right now, I would be learning in one of these ways which I'm going to tell you. One of them is software at a time, one software at a time. Another one is one vulnerability at a time. And the third one is one methodology at a time. So one software at a time. For example, I learned Metasploit. I learned Nessus and Bob Suite. I learned I was learning software by software. This is the by far the best approach I have found to learning things. You see, most of the times we have so many things to learn, we just don't know in what order to learn this stuff. Learn softwares. That's the biggest advice I can give you because most of the times learning software means you're developing an actual ability instead of learning some random concepts which will not help you to make money or do anything practically. So yes, those concepts help, but I think to actually be able to execute an actual pen test and do some real work, you need to learn a software. So one software at a time is the first approach. Bob Suite, Nessus, Metasploit, and Core Impact, and Canvas, and basically whatever tool you want to learn. If, if you are an absolute beginner, Nmap might be a tool for you, but learn stuff one by one. Learn softwares one by one. Forget about all of these random things people are saying. After you have learned the overall basics from any free course or anything you get online, go ahead and start learning softwares by software. I have learned a lot by this way, and I would say 90% of the practical skills which I have, it's all by software at a time. And I started 
learning in this way in 2020, which is only two years back. So I have learned a hell lot in that way. Another thing which I have done is one vulnerability at a time. So now see, these are different approaches, which I'm telling you one software at a time, one vulnerability at a time and one methodology at a time. So it's not that you have to mix those and you know it should not be like you're learning one software one day and other day you're learning a vulnerability don't do that these are complete different approaches you can start with one and stick with one approach that that's what i would recommend you to do so one vulnerability at a time is the second thing after one software at a time now one vulnerability at a time is basically like SQL injection or buffer overflow or something like you know there are so many vulnerabilities, XSS, CSRF, low hanging fruits, whatever you might want to learn and, and anything basically that are practically specific vulnerabilities. If you are especially in web hacking, if that's what interests you the most, just go ahead and start learning vulnerability by vulnerability. I have also done this. I, in fact, I created some lectures about SQL injection. So. And I created some lectures about Bob Suite, right? So that's an example of software at a time. And I created some lectures about SQL injection. So they are some, you know, they are like vulnerability time. So I think it's not a good idea to waste your time thinking what to learn in what order. Just go ahead and follow one of these three approaches. Software time, vulnerability time, and the last one, which is methodology at a time, one methodology at a time. And what that means is in our industry, we have a lot of methodologies that, you know, are like steps of doing something, of testing any particular asset. So for example, to test websites, we have the OWASP testing guide, or which you can even call as the OWASP methodology. If you just go to Google and search OWASP testing guide, you will get a free PDF and it's something like 400 pages long and it contains a lot of tests. So start learning the whole methodology, right? One by one. Don't waste your time learning random things then. If, if you're using the one methodology at a time approach, go ahead and take one methodology and learn it from start to end because this will help you get actual abilities. You see, I'm not talking about taking a lot of courses and learning the basic concepts. I'm telling you the three approaches that will actually teach you or give you the actual abilities which you need to do something because nobody's gonna pay you for your knowledge. The only thing which people are gonna pay you for ever is the work. So in order to do the work, you need some practical skills and that you can get either from software, vulnerability, or methodology. So other examples of methodology apart from OWASP testing guide may be OSSTMM, ISSAF, and a lot much more. So these were the three approaches in which majority of your hacking will be learned. And at the end, like just as a bonus, if you're still looking to learn something, go ahead and learn how to secure one thing at a time. You see, if you're a web hacking expert and you just don't know what to learn if you have already learned a lot of vulnerabilities and you don't have anything new start learning about security because if you're a web pen tester and you have security skills too apart from testing you can possibly get paid a lot much more by your client because you will have some more knowledge and value to offer them so that's a good thing secure one thing at a time for example learn how to secure wordpress learn how to secure some code which is written in say JavaScript or PHP. Learn those kind of things if you're a web pen tester. If you're a network tester, then maybe you can learn how to secure networks or you know how secure designs of networks look like. You can learn more about networking. So after you have learned the majority of your actual skills by you know the three approaches which I told you, you can possibly consider learning how to secure one thing at a time. And after this as well, if you want to learn something, then go ahead and learn things like, you know, the gap fillers, I would say, like reporting, planning, those kind of things. So there are still gaps. There are still important things. They're in fact really important. But first of all, you need technical skills, which you got by those three approaches. One of them, basically, of course, you don't need to, you know, go ahead and try and mix all of them because that will only create confusions for you. And that's why these are three separate approaches. 
And yeah, that's basically what I wanted to say. Just fill the gaps at the very end, learn the things that were not covered in any of those approaches or things I told you. So, but that's for the end, as I said. And one more productivity kind of tip I can give you is always learn on a laptop. Don't, you know, because I don't think you will ever want to learn on your smartphone because it has a small screen and you might not even want to learn, you know, psychologically for me at least, I don't like to sit at one place and, you know, in my, in front of my computer screen and start learning things that way. Because I just have to sit in this one place and I cannot move and do what I want to do. Because I cannot just move around when I want to and I'll have to just strictly sit at one place and keep watching the whole thing or keep learning everything that way, which is hard for me. So I always recommend that if you can afford, you can learn from laptop. You don't need to have a laptop, but you know, this is just, if you have a laptop, I would ask you or I would suggest you to learn from a laptop because that's for me has been the best thing to learn on. And of course, at the end of this whole discussion, what I would like to say is that you will not need any of these things in case you have an actual teacher. You see, these were the things for people who are learning by themselves, by self-study. But if you're a person open-minded into learning things you know, by an actual specific teacher who has done a lot of work in the industry. Anyone, I am not going to give specific names or or even me. I'm not going to talk about all of those things. But what I'm telling you is that if you're open to the idea of not self-studying that much, but rather devoting all your time into a particular program, training program, or anything which a lot of companies are offering online, in that case, In, you know, if in case you get some good teachers, I can say you will not need to do any of these approaches. They will teach you everything step by step. So that's an amazing thing also. If you can enroll into a complete training program, then you might not need all of these self-study approaches. So that's basically what I wanted to tell you in this whole podcast. I know I have been repeating a lot of things right now and some of you might have not you know, like you might have thought I was going too fast, but that's the comfortable speed for me to talk. And I think it just reduces the time of the podcast, which will save your time at the end. So that's what I like to do. And also you will not need to speed up the lecture or the podcast in this speed. So I think it's kind of a perfect speed, which a lot of other people have also appreciated for me in the past for talking at a right speed and they have liked it. So these were the things I want to tell you. This is a way better approach to learn that rather than taking any basic course on the internet, $10, $50 courses, this is not the right thing to do. Just go ahead and learn things for free by yourself, at least to a doable extent you know, at which you can do before wasting your money on any training that doesn't make sense. So, I mean, of course, there are good teachers online. I'm not saying that, um, or actually I'm saying that in a way because most teachers are not teaching good. That's why I'm here making these podcasts for you to save you. But, you know, there are some good teachers as well, which I appreciate. But at the end, it's good that everyone is contributing in their own little way to help the new people get into the industry. So that's what I wanted to say for this whole podcast. Um, Again, if you have any suggestions for what to name this podcast, please go ahead and put that in the comments. I really want to give it a specific name. And from the next podcasts, you know, from the next Saturday, of course, we're going to talk about some more important topics, you know, like demotivation and, and where to learn because we see all of these crowded places and groups and, and mediums and websites of learning where it's really hard to learn this stuff. So where to learn will be one of our next podcasts, not necessarily the next, but that's for sure that we'll be doing a podcast every Saturday from now. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and I'll see you in the next one now.